Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning or good, good evening, depending where you are from in this world. I hope you're having a good day regardless. And today we're going to talk about the paradox of tolerance. And the reason why I say paradox, you'll understand that later in this video when I start explaining the concept of tolerance. And the reason I chose the topic tolerance to begin with is because I feel like in the current modern day and age, we always put a lot of emphasis on the word tolerance. You have to be tolerant. You have to be tolerant towards this. You have to be tolerant to, towards that. And you have to accept tolerance. You have to, you know, do this and that, you know, so many requirements at once. And, you know, you have to stop for a second and think, like, what exactly are you tolerant towards? And what are you intolerant against? And that is primarily more of a concern in the Western world rather than in the rest of the world, quite frankly speaking. I think this is more of a Western ph ph phenomena rather than a global ph 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 uh, phenomena because I've never seen Eastern people or by Eastern people, I mean like Eastern Europeans or Asians or Africans or whatever else, South Americans they have never really talked that much about tolerance and if anything they are more protective of their religion they're more protective of their culture and their language and their community as a whole it's only here in western europe where we have to accept multiculturalism we have to accept different cultures we have to accept you know different differences and be more tolerant well why is that like at least ask yourself at least talk about you know the concept why are you even tolerant what and and how much can you take in the tolerance how much can you be tolerant and then when is this the like the stopping point when are you done with being tolerant so that's something about what i want to discuss today and you know does it actually lead to actual tolerance or is it a disguise for something else and and i feel like to begin the the the, the topic as a whole we're, we're always going to start with the definition as with every other video and the, the definition is the ability to tolerate the existence of opinions or behavior that one dislikes or disagrees with. So that means when you have a disagreement with, with somebody, let's say a certain opinion, if you like, I don't know, if you like Real Madrid and I like Barcelona, I, I, I can tolerate your opinion, I can tolerate your, your thought. You're, you're, you know, you're a Real Madrid fan. Okay, fine. I disagree with you, but I, but I tolerate it. So I can still live and I can still continue my life knowing that you're a Real Madrid fan and that we don't align with our, with our views, with our values. Now, this is a simple, a very simplistic e example of what tolerance could maybe mean. Of course, there are many other examples that you could bring with regards to tolerance. Now, on a more international level, on a more political level, on a more cultural level, things start to become more complicated or even like on a religious level. So, and this is something what, for example, our society, our Western society, and I would say maybe in the last like 20 years has started to, to preach tolerance. So and what exactly are they t demanding from us that we're, that we should be more tolerant to? So we should be more tolerant, tolerant to, you know, different cultures, you know, because of immigration in the last 20 years that has been rising here in Europe. So we should accept for, for who they are, we should accept that they have a different viewpoint. They should, that we should accept, we should be tolerant that we should, um, you know, understand them. We should, you know, accept them and, you know, have them here and, you know, they should live the way they want to live. While to some degree it is perfectly normal and understandable that we shouldn't be completely intolerant and we shouldn't be completely, you know, isolationist and you know, not accept anyone at all. But at the same time, when is it enough? You know, when at what point do we say, look, this is too much. They are not assimilating to us. Why are we assimilating to them in our own home, in our own culture? And we're still tolerant. What 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 is that exactly supposed to mean? Because I believe fundamentally a society, any society, cannot tolerate everything at once. I believe that there are some limits where we have to set because w what defines a country, a country? What defines a culture, a culture? What defines a language, a language? Well, let's start with the country, for example. A country is a country when you have clear borders, 
when you have a culture, when you have a language, when you have a set of norms and customs and traditions, when you have a, a sense or a, a set of identity in your country that makes you as a German or you as a French or you, you as an Italian and not someone else. This is what defines a country of countries. When you adhere to your own culture, to your own views and values and the norms of that society. The point that I'm trying to say is that up to a certain degree, multiculturalism tolerance is acceptable. But when you start having too much at once, when you start pouring all, all sorts of ingredients in one pot at the same time, it's going to turn to crap, to absolute crap. That's why you, you need to have a little bit amount of salt, a little bit amount of dill, a little bit amount of water, a little bit amount of sauce or whatever else you're cooking. It will be a functioning state. It will be a functioning food. It will be a good food, essentially, a good state. But if you start pouring all sorts of things inside in one pot and just because you want to feel good and just because you want to feel tolerant, well, that's not going to work. And I feel like a lot of people want to feel good these days rather than being logical and, you know, analytical and critical of things. Well, because it feels good to be nice. It's good. It feels good to be, you know, tolerant. It feels good to, you know, help people. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it is it, it is a good thing to help people. It, it is a good thing to support others and, you know, try to be a good citizen of this country. But at the same time, you have to look out for yourself first. I feel like you have to first treat yourself and then you treat others before that. And not the other way around. The same thing in the airplane. I mean, you first have to put the mask over your face first yourself, and then you can help other people put their masks on. And not the other way around. And this is exactly what we're doing these days. What we're doing is that we're putting masks first on other people, and then we put on, on ourselves, if even, to some degree. Because sometimes we, peop, like certain countries, don't even do that anymore. If you take a look at America, America is no longer like that. America is no longer the way it used to be. And... This is exactly what I'm trying to say, that a certain level of tolerance is required for a functioning state to create harmony, but not when you start going overboard. And another point I would like to point out is that the whole idea of tolerance is a very one-sided concept, in my opinion, because we only talk about it here in the Western world. But the moment we start to discuss China or we, we, we start to discuss Asia, Africa, Middle East, whatever parts of the world it may be, we don't really try to force any of those people or cultures to become more tolerant. I mean, good luck trying to make Afghanis tolerant towards other cultures. Good luck trying to make certain Asian countries more tolerant to, towards uh, other people. I don't think they're going to be like that. I don't think they're going to be that super tolerant to begin with. So why why are we obliged? Why are we required to be super tolerant? But at the same time, other cultures, other countries are not not really, you know, culturally tolerant towards other people. So why is it exactly only us? This is a very weird ph uh, ph ph phenomenon. And I'm not going to get too deep into you know, conspiracy theories or politics or whatever. I'm just trying to stay as philosophically as possible here. But at the same time, it also kind of starts to get more political in some way, shape or form. And as a whole, to conclude the whole topic, the paradox of tolerance, I feel like the way we are now going, the, the level of tolerance we are now trying to pursue is going to lead to chaos or it has already led to chaos. If you take a look at England, Germany, Sweden... Belgium, Netherlands, and all these other countries in the West, especially. You can just take a look for yourself. I'm not really going to comment too much on that. But I think, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. And I don't want to sound like I'm a super anti-Western guy and a pro-Eastern guy or whatever it may be. This is just a pure critical analysis of the way things are. And I feel like these days, people cannot accept or cannot oh, tolerate the fact that you know, we are not the best, that we are, that we have to be critical. And if you hear things like that, you know, people are very black and white these days. It's either you are with them or you're against them. It's a, it's a such a us versus them mentality we have now. And I want to just end this or I want to try to eradicate this us versus them mentality because there's always a gray area in every situation, in every, in every conflict, in every crisis, in every problem situation that you may find yourself in is always a gray area and when I say things about the West that are bad that doesn't mean that I'm gonna be anti-Western 
immediately. So I just want to clarify that from the start, from the get-go. And of course, there's a lot of criticism also for the eastern parts of the world, but this is not the topic of conversation today. I'm talking about the western part in particular, about the tolerance. So wanted to get that clear, wanted to clear the air before you guys start commenting all sorts of things in the video. And on that note, all I want to say, practice healthy level of tolerance, but also be a little bit intolerant towards things that you don't want to have or that you don't agree with. Make sure that you have set, uh, set healthy boundaries, that you make clear lines, put the line in the sand, say what is good and what is bad. Don't accept everything, and but, all, but, all, but also don't reject everything. So common sense, that's what I'm trying to say. So on that note, I hope you guys have a good day. It was a very intense video, but had to do it. It was very interesting for me and hopefully it's interesting for you guys as well. So on that note, I hope you have a good day and see you in the next video.